If you do not take what I'm about to tell you seriously right now, I seriously really doubt you can overcome stuttering because every person, myself included, who has overcome stuttering has had to be aware and take action on what I'm about to tell you. And this is something I've talked about years ago and I have it in my program for people to overcome stuttering, but I haven't mentioned on my YouTube or my Instagram for a long time. And this is a pillar to overcoming stuttering and I wanna share it with you right now. What the pillar is, is managing your emotional state. And I wanna tell you why this is so important with this story. With this story, most, most men can really resonate to, resonate with, and I'm sure most women can as well. If you hear some background noise, that's the water. Let's try to tune that out, all right? So the story I wanna tell you is I want you to imagine right now that you, that you meet a cute girl, all right? You meet a cute girl. If you're, if you're a girl, then you meet a cute guy. I'm just gonna say cute girl. You meet a cute girl, you're at a park, and it just feels like you have an effortless conversational flow with her and you feel a little spark with her so you exchange phone numbers and you say do you want to hang out sometime and she says yes that night you get home and you say hey want to come to dinner with me tomorrow at 8 p.m she doesn't respond for the whole night she responds tomorrow around 11 a.m and she responds a text with sure can my friend come Sure, can my friend come? The importance of state man the importance of state management becomes extremely clear here because how you spent your time when you sent that initial text, hey, do you want to hang out at eight? To when she responded to you, where where your energy went, where your emotional state went, will determine how you feel about her response and how you feel about her if you're resenting her or if you're excited to see her because there's there's more than two paths but for sim for simplicity's sake let's just say there's two there's two paths you send that text and you wait half an hour and you check your phone and you say why hasn't she responded and with this little anxiety you have inside of yourself it starts to grow and grow and grow. And then at the one, one, one hour mark, you're like, why isn't she responding? So what you do is you're in a state of lack. You're in a state of needing something from that girl. Person one distracts himself. He watches YouTube all night. He plays games all night. He scrolls on social media, doom scrolling. And each time he checks his phone or checks the app that he messaged her on to double check she didn't somehow, her, mes her message didn't get lost, his state gets worse and worse and worse and he spirals down into a self-defeating state. And then when he receives a text in the morning, when he wakes up, he sees she still hasn't texted him when he wakes up at eight. And she finally responds at 11 a.m. and says, sure can my friend come it's like a fucking dagger in your stomach because this person's men this person's mental state got so trashed that when she said sure can my friend come he can only think negatively about this response he will think fuck she doesn't see me as and in as an intimate sexual partner she's like this is just gonna be a friend thing or the thoughts will be like is is the friend she's bringing a guy that he's that a guy that she's seeing or it will just be like is she, like is this her friend zoning me does she really want to come is this just her and her friend like 
do do they expect me just to get the bill? There's gonna be these thoughts in your head, depending on where your emotional state went in in that period of time. All right. Person two, he sends that text. Hey, do you want to grab dinner at eight? But this person, he has a purpose in his life. He has a mission, and he's work and he's working on that. Sure, he may have noticed that. Oh, she didn't respond. To, she didn't respond tonight. But it doesn't twist his guts. He's like, all right, because he has deep meaningful connections in life and he's not attached to that and he has an abundance of people in his life he doesn't have any shortage of people that he can go out with he feels abundant in his life by the time 11 a.m rolls around he hasn't been distracted been distracting himself with co with coping mechanisms of drugs of porn of youtube but he's been on his mission. He sees that text at 11 a.m. Sure, can my friend come? He gets excited because he's in a positive state. He, he, he can, he, his brain only attaches to the ways this can be good. And this is, is all gonna tie into stuff. It's all gonna tie into stuttering, I promise you, all right? So his, his thoughts are like, holy shit, does she want to have a three-way already? His thoughts are like, she already wants to introduce me to her friend group. His, his thoughts are like, I'm sure she already had plans for this day with this friend, but she wanted to see me so badly that she wants to bring her friend too. She doesn't want to miss out on an opportunity to see me. The, this, the same thing happened, but two different, completely different thoughts happened. One will get you to, re, to resent the girl and self-sabotage this potential relationship. The other will put you in a very strong, grounded space where you are confident and you're showing up as yourself. It's going to tie into stuttering very, very quickly. So what happens if you keep on distracting yourself when you face um, uncomfortability in relationships? Every time someone takes a bit longer to respond, you distract yourself and you bring yourself into a spiral. What happens is you get, you start to build a trauma with girls. You, and you start to have these weird thoughts of like, girls always play games. Girls, you, you can't trust girls. Um, girls are always going to leave me. Girls, girls don't see me as a sexual partner. Um, or you might think there's something foundationally wrong with yourself. If you keep distracting yourself and, bring, and not dealing with these emotions that, that make you want to distract yourself because you keep getting put in a low state. Here's the thing, here's how it connects to stuttering if you cannot see it already. Is the stutter is not what is making you hate yourself. The stutter is not what's putting you in a low state. It can be the trigger for it, but it's, 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 it's not the cause. Just like that text that that girl sent you, hey, can my friend come, that's, that's not the cause of the reason why you're doubting all your capabilities and you think you can't be a sexual partner. It's not the cause. And people develop a very toxic relationship with their stutter because they're already living an, an uninspired life. They're, are, they're already fucking drifting. They don't really know what they wanna do they're stagnant, they're playing games, they're scroll scrolling on social media, then they go and stutter. They're already in a negative state and they can only see the negatives of the stutter. Like, isn't this fucking mind blowing? They can only see the negatives of the stutter. So of course you're gonna start to question yourself. You're gonna, just like that guy who, the, the first version of the guy, 
he's gonna only see the negatives of that text. You're only gonna see the negatives of the stutter and you will make up negatives. I'm not saying there is even any negatives. You will make up negatives to have, con to have congruence with your state. And the more you have experiences where you don't like your stutter and you're continuing to hide away from this pain and distract yourself and use, co and use coping mechanisms, the worse your relationship with your stutter will be. And when you hate your stutter, it only makes it something that you want to resist more. If you think it's this big bad thing, you only resist it more. And the more you resist your stutter, the more you stutter. All right? So this is why, this is why being aware of your emotional state gives you so much power. Because if you know you're in a lethargic state, if you know you're in an anxious state, you can fucking tell yourself, this is, this is bullshit. The thoughts I'm thinking right now is not my thoughts. This, these thoughts are a manifestation of this low state that I'm in, of my emotional state. It's not even fucking true. It's not even true. It's because I'm in this low state, it's aspiring these negative thoughts. And it also gives you the power to be conscious of bringing yourself into more positive states, all right? And this is done through taking an inventory of your life and seeing what are your coping mechanisms that you've been using to distract yourself from these certain emotions? Where are you being triggered and why are you being triggered? And developing a sense of purpose that gives you fulfillment so you're not looking for fulfillment or validation from people you speak to, but you're whole and you're grounded inside of yourself. So when you speak in this new state where you're grounded and you're whole and you're open and you're present, and you haven't been distracting yourself with YouTube or any high do, any high do, any high do, any high dopamine activities, you're able to stutter if it does come up, which it'll be a lot less severe. But if it does come up, if you actually do stutter in this state, you won't give a fuck. You won't give a fuck and your thoughts will be so much more positive. And when you develop a relationship with your stutter where you stutter and you don't give a fuck and you see, hey, it's not that bad actually because you're in a more positive emotional state and you make congruence with this version of yourself it replaces your, your, your relationship with your stutter right now. And you're able to learn to not resist your stutter because it's not a thing that you, uh, that's bad because it hasn't been storing bad memories or thoughts in your brain. You see it's not that bad and you don't need to resist it and then you just, you can accept it. That's where you truly come into a state of acceptance. And when, once you can truly accept it, you, you, you won't care if you stutter, so the severity of when you stutter will fucking dramatically decrease and it will no longer be an issue for you, all right? That is something I haven't talked a lot about in the past few years on YouTube is your state management, but it is extremely, extremely essential. And there's four pillars to overcome stuttering. Four, just four and state management takes up two of them, is developing a strong sense of purpose and getting your daily habits on track, all right? It's removing the habits that cause you to be put in a repressive state, removing the habits that you use to distract yourself, removing the habits and becoming very aware of your coping mechanisms and replacing them with expressive habits, with with awareness and with feeling instead of distracting. Those are two pillars out of the four, all right? And if this video really makes sense to you and you can see the truth in it and you want to overcome your stutter, then there's a link down below in the description. You can book a free 
one-on-one -on -one call with me. I'll talk to you for about 10 to 15 minutes, get a few, um, I'll, I'll ask you a few questions and get some insights on your situation to see if I can actually help you and see if your, your goals are in alignment with what I can help with. And then if I do feel like I can help you, then we can actually create a plan together on a bit of a longer call of how we would actually overcome your stutter and how I've helped over 60 people in the past two and a half years overcome their stutter too, all right? I hope this was extremely, extremely helpful. Look down below in the description if you're serious about overcoming your stutter and you want, you, you want to take step-by-step -step actions each and every day laid out for you so there's no more trial and error on your side. You can just take action that works. All right, I love you. I'll see you in the next video. This was a bit of a longer video, but it's because I love you.